I caught all kinds of grief for being too mean to the county prosecutor. That was weird. I didn't think I would ever be called mean for for doing a takedown of an attorney. For sharing your of a lawyer opinion. Yeah, too. it happens all the Well, what happens is you end up in these different political bubbles. So Rachel Mitchell is running for re-election, and so you've got people who are Rachel Mitchell supporters, and they go, "Don't be mean to Rachel." And I go, "What? Why? Because what if you get somebody worse?" I'm like, well, that would be mean, mean to them too. But I don't our think you job, were being mean. Thank you, Joe. I appreciate that. Our job in media is to be that fourth estate, right? It is to it is to observe, and in our case, opine on what we witness mm-hmm. for good or bad. Yeah. In fact, Joe, just to give you a heads up, at three o'clock is going to do something that I never thought I would see before. Oh, great. He's going to say something good about someone we all love to hate. So that's coming up. Yes, all right? So is, you got to call it like you see it. We call balls and strikes, right? Yeah, we do. So the prosecutors now in the Gilbert Goon stuff, they're cutting these, these uh, deals for guilty pleas from the first handful of adults that were arrested with the Gilbert Goon's p- attacks, right? So we're not talking about the, the Preston Lord murder, accused murderers, except to say that four of them of the seven are ineligible for the death penalty because the crime happened when they were under 18. Mm-hmm. Three others were over 18, and she said, we're not going to look for the death penalty because that wouldn't really be fair because the other four were involved too, and they, they're not eligible. I think that is the dumbest thing that, that she could have said. For someone who is very smart, that is very bad politics. That, that's how you took it. I, the way that's I, what she said. The way I see it is a little different, as, as simple as... I take it as she's saying she doesn't think that they would be able to get the death penalty against those kids. That's not what she said. She said we're not seeking the death penalty because the other four aren't eligible for the death penalty, and we don't know who may have had more to do with it. Mm -hmm. Right? Sure. Okay. Don't say that. Don't say that right now. We got to get back to the basics here if we're going to understand where I come from, and and I wanted to I wanted to kind of explain some of my nuance because I'm not a bloodthirsty leech. I really am not. Joe, we laughed about this earlier because I felt remorse when I hit a wasp with raid because I thought I hope he's not in pain. No, you. I'm a big softy. You tell me all the time that you still will you know get teary eyed about your dog who passed. Away. I do right. But I also, I feel like I have to remove myself from this a little bit. I am emotional when it comes to the Gilbert Goon stuff because we have kids who are being beaten for no reason. And And you're a dad. Yeah. And these are not just fist fights after school. That's not what this is. These are This was not one-on-one. This was, in in many cases, a kid sitting in an In-N-Out burger with maybe two of their friends and a pack of goons. Showing up and either demanding car keys or a chain or money and then, you know, beating the tar out of them. So I got I, I was thinking about this. If we're talking about these sentences, people are like, why don't you trust the prosecutor? We got what is the point of our justice system, right? It's to maintain the rule of law. And so we have these sentences for crimes, and those sentences are meant to serve as deterrence. They're intended to make it very clear that there are consequences of your actions. And if we don't adhere to, I'm going to call it a rough framework of these consequences. And I say that because you've always got sentencing uh, parameters, Mm -hmm. right? Uh, This could be worth, this could be 8 to 10 years, this could be uh, 10 to 15, whatever it is. So not only have we failed now in the penal phase, if we don't issue a sentence that's on par with the crime, we also reset the understanding of what those consequences should be. So can I just throw out a for instance, the way I digest what you just said, let's say we've got a hundred other cases that they look at over the last month. Yes. Of, uh, aggravated assault. uh, Yep. I was, Uh I was going to say assault, but yeah, aggravated assault. And let's say in 90 of those cases, they decided we're going to go with community service and probation for whatever reason. Uh-huh. They're, they're simply looking at the case, and that's what they're going with. Uh-huh. You can't look at the Gilbert Goons and go, whoa, that's a high-profile case. We're going to go for six years jail time and ten well, years of probation. You can. It's called setting an example. You, you can, but right. then you're also going to have the defense sit there and go, whoa, yeah. we just had a hundred other cases, and in the vast majority of them— and they'll say, we'll see you in court. Right. right. Okay. So then you're going to throw your you're going to throw yourself at the mercy of the judge, and that's fine too. But in this case, it's a little bit your your fractions are inverted. 
All right? So run the reciprocal. Think about this. Suppose you've got a coworker who keeps calling in with some ailment. And everybody in your office knows that Dave doesn't have a cervical infection. But Dave doesn't know what those words mean, and the boss doesn't really feel like calling him out on it. So one Friday, Dave calls in, and he says he's got endometriosis, and it's really killing him today, and he's not going to make it in. And meanwhile, you've got a major presentation scheduled because you've got a new client that flew in from Taiwan, and Dave was supposed to take the lead. The boss calls you and says that Dave's womb hurts, so he's not going to make it, and that you're going to have to give the presentation. All right? It's save your whole Dave is really Danielle, but identifies as Dave jokes because that's tired. Rolling with you. Yeah. So you step up, right? But you don't have Dave's slides. Your PowerPoint doesn't match the script because that's all messed up, and the whole thing is a disaster. The Taiwanese investors, they pass on the deal, and the boss says this is your fault. You should have been able to step up, and you're very frustrated. So you go home that Friday night. You wake up on Saturday morning. You didn't sleep very well. You're kind of staring at the clock. 6.30 rolls around. You figure, all right, I'm getting up. You roll into the shower, you put on your, your Saturday comfy clothes, and then you jump into your Subaru. Subaru? Mitsubishi? Mm-hmm. Chrysler Familiar. 300, maybe? Familiar. Okay. Uh, so then you head to, to Dutch Brothers because you want to go stand in line for coffee. And while you're there, you turn on KTAR and you start listening to Bunker to Bunker Radio, and you hear a very familiar voice. Hmm. Oh, it's Dave, and he's a guest on the show. And he's talking about the incredible round that he had yesterday at TPC Scottsdale. And he talks about his tee shots and his birdie on 16 and whatever he drank in the 19th hole, right? Thought he had endometriosis. Yeah, Dave did not actually have endometriosis. Come to find out, he was lying. Oh. Yeah. So Go you, figure. You call your boss on Saturday morning because you're livid. The company just lost a multi-million dollar deal because this clown called in sick. He actually wanted to go play golf. And now he's on uh, the top golf show in the valley bragging about it right Mm -hmm. so the boss is beyond angry calls dave right then and you can you know this because you heard his phone ring over the radio because he didn't turn off his ringer like everybody else should know to do and it you think serves him right so monday comes around right and the boss brings everybody together at eight o'clock company-wide meeting everybody in the conference room and you're you're thinking this is yeah they're gonna tell everybody about how they fired dave nope The boss instead reprimands everybody there. She says that sick days are for illnesses and emergencies only. And if you get caught using sick days to play hooky, you could face termination. Seems like a shot at Dave. Seems like it, but you're a little miffed. Because you know she's talking about Dave, but Dave's not in the room and she's yelling at you. So you speak up and you go, is Dave, quote unquote, seeking other opportunities? Right? And she tells the group... That, uh, well, we're looking into Dave, but he's not going to be fired. And right now he's on paid leave for two weeks to think about what he did. Now you tell me, Joe, Mm -hmm. what's the message that boss just sent to everybody else that's there? Um, If anybody calls in sick and they're not sick, you could be fired. Well, what about the guy that just did it? Oh, well, he's not getting fired. He's on two weeks paid vacation to think about it. I guess the message that would be sent to me would be, Maybe Dave's going to be fired, but he hasn't been yet, and I'm getting yelled about it, and Dave's not even here, so maybe Dave's Dave, getting paid to not be there. Maybe Dave did get yelled at it, but kind of kind of seems wishy washy. Kind of seems wishy washy, right? Just like, listen, consequences have to be clear, right? So it doesn't have to be necessarily ironclad. It's still discretion for the judges and that sort of thing, right? But if the justice system veers too far outside the framework. We start to question the whole system. And what's the point in having rule of law if we're not going to enforce it? What's the point in having prescribed sick days if Dave can just go golfing whenever he wants and he gets two weeks of paid leave to think about it as punishment? What does that say to the rest of the company? So what are these deals and these announcements? We're not going to seek the death penalty and oh, community service should be good. What message does that send to the rest of the goons? What message does that send to the victims? Where are the consequences? And where is the deterrent? Thanks for watching the Chris and Joe Show. Click to see more from Chris and Joe and tap the button in the middle to subscribe to KTAR News.